Hey guys, Paul here at Impulsive Culinary and welcome to part one of my St. Patrick's Day menu series. And in this video, I want to talk to you about some gluten-free Irish stew. So if you're checking out St. Patty's Day recipes or St. Patrick's Day recipes, right? You're Googling this and you're checking it out. What is an authentic Irish recipe? Irish stew is often the one that comes up right up on top, almost all the time. And so we're making it gluten-free. Now, the flour is not a big deal. You can just use a little bit of uh, corn flour or whatever. But the beer is something, okay? Um, I love Guinness. I will not lie. I absolutely love Guinness. Um, and so there's this alternative here. I'm not endorsing Glutenberg because of any money or anything like that, but they do make a good stout and it's available in my area. It's one of the only stout that uh, is gluten-free that's available in my area. I'm sure if you're from the US, there's probably some really good uh, small uh, microbreweries that make a fantastic uh, you know, uh, gluten-free stout or dark beer. Find the best proximity that you can, all right? Uh, and be sure to uh, taste it first and make sure that you like it. You don't want to add junk into your stew. I've tried this one. I happen to know for a fact it is delicious. So that's what we're going to be using along with these ingredients. Get yourself one whole head of garlic cloves, one quarter cup of dairy-free margarine, three medium-sized yellow onions, which you're going to chop, three pounds of potatoes, any kind, russet, whatever you like, six tablespoons of olive oil, one tablespoon of kosher salt, one tablespoon of sugar, half a tablespoon of onion powder, half a tablespoon of garlic powder, three pounds of good quality cubed chuck beef. All right, you don't have to use the lean stuff for beef bourguignon, just the marbled chuck beef will be great. Extra flavor. One quarter cup of corn flour, a big carrot thinly sliced, one big celery stick thinly sliced, half a can of tomato paste, one can or bottle of gluten-free dark stout, four cups of broth, any kind will do, vegetable or beef, one large can of peas, which you're gonna drain. Let's go make some Irish stew. Guys, St. Patrick's is one of my absolute favorite holidays of the entire year. Very lucky time of year. If you're not Irish, you can be one of the Irish. First step, preheat the oven to 400 degrees. So the next thing I gotta do is roast this head of garlic in the 400 degree oven for one hour. So you can get yourself an oven safe dish, a pie plate will do the trick, whatever you need. So basically chop off the head of your garlic. So once you've chopped off the top of that head of garlic, you should be able to see every single garlic clove. And the point is, you wanna get a little dab of olive oil on every single clove, all right? So go ahead, dab away. So there you can see guys, I've drizzled some olive oil on top of my head of garlic cloves and every single clove is nice and saturated with a little bit of oil in my oven safe container, which I'm now gonna cover up with a little bit of tin foil. All right, tin foil on top of the garlic clove and get that in the center rack for one hour. All right, so while your garlic is roasting in the oven, it's time to caramelize your onions. You can do that in pretty much anything you want. It's gonna be a 45 to 60 minute process. I like to use cast iron frying pan. Do you have to use cast iron? No, you can use any skill that you like. I prefer this, get this over low heat. Next, you wanna get three medium sized yellow onions, peel them and chop them up into a rough dice. All right, so with your skillet over low heat, get a quarter cup or so of dairy-free margarine into the skillet. Pop in your chopped onions, guys, and forget about them for around an hour. All right, so the next step, guys, is about preparing your potatoes. We wanna roast these. We wanna add as much flavor into this stew as we possibly can. Every ingredient that goes in is gonna taste amazing. So we're roasting our potatoes. You can peel and cut these up into cubes while you're waiting. So get started. All right, so once you've chopped up your potatoes into around one inch cubes or so, just something bite-sized like this, get them into a large mixing bowl. Then you wanna add all of your seasonings, your salt, your sugar, garlic and onion powder, put that in and toss them well. Along with three of the six tablespoons, only half of that olive oil, guys. So put three tablespoons of olive oil into the potato mix. Toss away. 
All right, so once you've tossed all the seasonings into your potatoes, get them onto a parchment-lined baking dish, nice, even layer. Now, depending on where your garlic is at, move it around, get your potatoes into the center rack, 400 degree oven, for 25 minutes. All right, so as you can see, guys, my little garlic pod is up on the top rack, and I've stuck my potatoes in the middle. Everything's at 400, so it's all good. 25 minutes for those potatoes. Small confession. It requires four cups of broth. I ran out. So I made some broth. You know, I kept that out of the shot, but I basically made a huge, huge tub of vegetable broth this afternoon in preparation for this. You don't have to do that, but if you want to. So yes, I'm benefiting from the magic of homemade broth, but if you don't have such a thing, all right, if you're using frozen or whatever it is, put it in the saucepan, get it over low heat, and warm it up so that it's ready for when you need it. All right, so we've got garlic roasting, we've got onions caramelizing, we've got potatoes roasting, everything's in full effect. Next step, you wanna get a big Dutch oven, guys, something that's gonna hold your entire recipe, get it warmed up over medium heat. All right, so depending on your butcher, guys, your chunks of chuck beef may come in really large cubes or in small cubes like this. Depending on what you get, I like to chop them up into one inch cubes. That's bite size for me, all right? So chop them up, trim off the excess fat, get them into a large mixing bowl. All right, so you wanna season these beef cubes with a generous amount of kosher salt and some freshly ground black pepper. Then add a quarter cup of any gluten-free flour, but flour guys, not starch. So corn flour, rice flour, whatever you got on hand, quarter cup. And toss that together well. Three tablespoons of oil into the Dutch oven. Now don't crowd the beef. Go a few pieces at a time so that they're not touching each other. Seven or eight pieces. When I say seven or eight, uh, I meant 10 or 11. Right, right. It's a science. So guys, depending on the size of your Dutch oven, you may be able to fit more or less, but once you've got one minute cooking time, once you flip it over, you're gonna see that beautiful browning. That's what you want. You don't wanna cook these things. You just want them to brown on each side. So get them flipped over. One minute per side should do the trick, and then get them out into a nice clean bowl. Rinse and repeat till you run out of meat. <laughs> Gee, I like this. All right, so in between batches of meat, guys, my garlic is done and my potatoes are ready to flip. Let's check it out. Whew, first the garlic. I'm gonna set that aside and let it cool for around 15 minutes. Next is my roasted potatoes. So they're cooked on one side. I'm gonna flip them over with the spatula, get them back in for at least another 15 minutes. Okay, potatoes are back in for 15 minutes. Gonna finish browning this beautiful cubed beef. Okay, the hardest part is done. The beef is browned and my timer just went off with the potatoes. Let's get them out of the oven. Oh, that's fantastic. There's a delicious batch of roasted potatoes. You don't put it in the Irish stew unless it tastes delicious. Yeah. Okay, so in the interest of taking a break, I've removed my Dutch oven from the heat just for a moment, all right, so that I can chop up my carrot and my celery. Hey guys, go big. Don't go small, all right? Big carrot, big celery. All right, so once you've finished thinly slicing your large carrot and large celery stock, get your Dutch oven back over the heat. Add the two veggies, saute for around two to three minutes. All right, so this is a very important stage of the recipe, guys. This carrot and celery is going to give off some water. While it's doing so, you wanna slowly scrape the bottom of your pan and those brown bits are eventually going to start to unstick from the bottom. That is pure flavor. You wanna keep all of that. So as you can see, guys, after just a couple of minutes, the carrots and the celery have become quite softened. They're looking kinda of good. And the bottom of the pan is almost completely deglazed. I haven't even added any beer yet, and I've been able to get all of that beautiful flavor off the bottom of the pan. So now when I add the beer, it's just a bonus. So guys, now you want to pop open a can of your best gluten-free stout, get it into the pan. Up is St. Patrick's Day! There you go guys, can of stout into the pan, let that bubble off a little bit so that the foam reduces, and then take the second or two to really deglaze as much as you can. 
carefully pluck out all of those beautiful roasted garlic cloves, get them into the skillet. Right, so the garlic is in. Beautiful roasted garlic is now in the skillet. We haven't even checked on the caramelized onions. Let's have a look. Look at those gorgeous onions, guys. Beautifully caramelized. Now it's about time to get those into the stew pot. In go the onions, margarine and all. All right, so guys, it's pretty standard no matter where you're from. A can of tomato paste, around this size, is usually 10 ounces. So half a can or five or six ounces into the skillet. Get a big whisk, whisk it together well. Yeah, by now your Irish stew is smelling freaking fantastic and it looks pretty good. The beer has reduced. Now it's time to get the final star ingredients into the pot. All right guys, so the next thing in is all of your beef cubes, including the juices that have accumulated in the bottom of the bowl. Get everything into the skillet. Next, you wanna add all of your roasted potatoes. Yeah, there's really not much room left in this pot, right? So the careful part is next. You wanna make sure to stir all of this together until everything is combined. And then you wanna add just enough of your broth to cover everything up and make sure that it's all submerged. Carefully stir the ingredients together. All right, so your four cups of broth, you don't have to use the whole thing. Depending if your butcher was a little bit more generous on the beef or you used more potatoes or your pan is smaller, you just wanna add enough broth to cover everything up and then put the cover on and simmer for three hours. Oh, oh, oh. absolutely spectacular. Let's have a look. All right, there you go, guys. I've added just enough broth to cover everything. I pushed down the beef cubes and all of the potatoes so that everything is submerged. I didn't use all of the four cups. I basically used, I don't know, I'm gonna say maybe two and three quarters to three cups. I've got around a cup of broth left and that's fine. Listen, I can reuse that for something else, but most importantly, my pan is full. So now I'm gonna set this to low. I'm gonna turn down the heat, cover it up, and let it simmer on the stovetop for three hours. So after three long hours, this is finally ready. Guys, let's have a look. <laughs> oh, this is gorgeous. An absolutely delicious Irish stew. Smells so good. Before you serve that up, you wanna remove those bay leaves. Ah, oh, this smells so good. Tender meat bubbling away. Ah, yum! So depending on the taste of each customer, you can add fewer or more of those beautiful green peas. So guys, St. Patrick's Day, everybody's Irish. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, be sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and don't miss any of the St. Patrick's Day recipes that are coming up in the weeks to follow. Oh, and don't forget to join me every Wednesday for the Wednesday Weekly Update, where I get to open up a brand new vintage and have a drink with you guys live right here from the Impulsive Culinary Kitchen. Catch in the next video, guys. Oh, 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 oh,